Hello, this video was created to help you to understand why millions are gone, if your family and friends are missing, along with millions around the world who have disappeared, and all the children who have mysteriously vanished. I'm sure there was widespread panic when this phenomenal event had taken place with everyone wanting answers. And if you would like answers, please watch this video to the end. First, let me assure you that your family and friends, the children around the world, and all the millions who vanished are safe. They are alive and well. Now you may heard all kinds of explanations of what has happened, but no matter what you were told, please know it wasn't aliens. No one is on a mothership. No one was abducted by a UFO. No one is on another planet being re-educated because we were unfit for this new society. No one was destroyed by some alien weapon or some alien technology or any other unknown terrorist weapon or technology. No one was vaporized. No one was destroyed by an EMP, nuclear bomb, or radiation. No one is in a parallel universe. No one fell into a black hole or alternate dimension. It wasn't a virus or pandemic or any other excuse that they may use to try to debunk what happened. Now you may have been with someone when they vanished right in front of your eyes. Know that what has happened was prophesied in the Bible. The Bible mentions in Matthew 24, 40, two will be in the field, one will be taken and the other will be left. Maybe you experienced this for yourself. Maybe you saw it caught on video. So no matter what excuse is used to try to explain away why millions are gone, know that millions of people who trusted in Jesus have bypassed death and gone to heaven in the event known as the rapture. The rapture is a long-awaited event that many Christians have looked forward to for almost 2,000 years, where Jesus comes in the clouds and gathers his people into heaven, which was spoken about in the Bible. The Bible predicts this rapture event 1 Corinthians 15, 51-53, where Paul is showing us a mystery. We believers will not all die. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we will take off this body that gets old, has aches and pains, and will eventually die. And we will put on an immortal body that will never get old. It will never have aches and pains, and it will never die. Then we see in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout, with the sound of a trumpet call. And the Christians who died trusting Jesus will be raised first. And then the Christians who are alive at the time of the rapture will be caught up. That's where we get the word rapture from, rapture, harpazo, caught up, to meet Jesus in the clouds. And Paul tells us in verse 18, to comfort one another with this promise. We see here in verse 13 it says that you sorrow not as others which have no hope. Those without hope are you, the ones that are left behind. Because as Christians we have hope that the world that is coming will be better than the world that we are in now. We call this the blessed hope. This is in Titus 2.13. We Christians alive and dead awaited the blessed hope of the rapture in the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus tells his disciples in John 14, 1-3 that in heaven there are many mansions. Then Jesus says he is leaving to prepare a place for us Christians. And Jesus promised that if he leaves, he will come again and take us to live with him where he is. The Bible also explains where those who are raptured have gone. They are alive and safe and with Jesus in heaven. Isaiah says in Isaiah 26, 20, Go into your mansion and shut the door, and hide yourself until the wrath has passed. Revelations 3, 10, Jesus says because we trusted in him, he will keep us, protect us from the hour of testing. See, Jesus is sparing us from what is coming up next. Now I understand that there may be professing Christians that remain and they may come out and say that the rapture has not taken place because they're still here. But the Bible is clear there is a difference between intellectually knowing who Jesus is and having a personal relationship with Jesus. We see in Luke 18, 9 through 14, the Pharisee in the story was proud. He was boasting about what he does. He says, I attend church every time the door is open. 
I give tithes and offerings every service. But this publican, he was humble. He wouldn't even lift his head up because he was ashamed of his sin. But he prayed, God have mercy on me, a sinner. See, one bragged about who he was. The other knew he needed God's forgiveness. You know, I like to compare this to knowing a celebrity. You may know all about them, their favorite color, who they're dating, whatever it may be. And that's like knowing Jesus intellectually. Because chances are, you can know all about everything that that celebrity does. But do you know them personally? Do you spend time together? Do you hug? Do you watch TV together? Do you physically interact in person? You may know every aspect of that celebrity's life, but that celebrity probably knows nothing about you. Or let me say it this way. I'm sure all of us, at some point in time in our life, have been on some form of social media. Now, you may have had friends all over the world, and you may have talked to them about your similar interests. Maybe even talked to them in public in a comment section, or maybe you talked to them in private, either through email or some other form of private messaging. You may have even video or voice chatted with them. But do you see them physically? Have you ever physically touched them? Do you interact physically with them? This is the same with the Christians who were left behind. They were aware of Jesus, but they didn't have a relationship with him. They didn't try to get to know him. They didn't read his word. They didn't pray to him. They didn't take him seriously. They thought just going to church or preaching in a church or serving in a church would save them, but it won't. You are not saved by your good works. You can't be a good enough person. So just because there may have been professing Christians left behind, that does not mean that the rapture hadn't taken place. Now Christian watchmen have been warning people for years that the rapture event is coming. Sadly, there was professing Christians who stood against this, lying to everyone, saying the rapture was years away. But the Bible says life would go on as usual when the rapture takes place. Jesus says in Matthew 24, 38, And at the time of the rapture, there would be like the days before the flood, people would be eating and drinking and getting married until the day that Noah entered the ark. And Jesus continues this idea in Luke 17, 26, where Jesus is saying, At the time of the rapture will be like the days of Lot, where they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. So maybe you doubted the rapture, or maybe no one even explained the rapture to you, or you refused to listen. Sadly, now you're left behind. Now you need to know what is coming next. Soon after the rapture, and you will hear news of two men on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. We read about them in Revelation 11, 3-6. These men will be preaching the gospel. They will also have power to keep it from raining all over the world. They will also have power to smite the earth with plagues. These two men will be hated by the entire world. Know that these two men are God's two witnesses. And if anyone tries to come against them, they will breathe fire and destroy anyone who tries to attack them. Know also that there will be a group of 144,000 Jewish evangelists who will also be preaching the gospel during this time as well. And soon after this rapture event, there will be a seven-year peace deal signed. Daniel 9.27 tells us that someone will make a covenant for many with many nations. Some Bible translations say he will confirm the covenant. Some say that he will strengthen the covenant. And as of recording this video, there have been different Middle East peace deals that have been made. Now on this side of the rapture, we are not sure if a previously established Middle East peace deal will be strengthened or if this peace deal will be a completely new seven-year peace deal. But in part of the peace deal, the Jews will be allowed to build their third temple. Now the man who will sign this covenant, this peace deal, will be a very likable man. He will be articulate, eloquent, persuasive, intelligent, charismatic, charming, magnetic, captivating, even hypnotic. He may even possibly be a very attractive looking person because people are going to worship this man like they would worship someone famous like a celebrity or athlete or musician. Crowds will throng this man like teenage girls at a boy band concert. But listen to me, do not trust this man. He is the Antichrist. Revelation 13.4 says that the dragon will give the beast his power. This beast is the Antichrist. The dragon is Satan. We see that in Revelation 12.9. It proves saying that the dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. In 2 Thessalonians 2.9 it confirms that the beast, the Antichrist's power, was given by Satan with all signs and lying wonders. We see... In Daniel 8, 23 through 25, 
that the Antichrist will use false peace to destroy many because with all the problems that will be facing the world after the rapture has taken place, people will be looking for a savior to usher in peace and prosperity without moral accountability and the Antichrist will promise this peace to the world if they follow him, but his intentions will be sinister. Another way to identify this the Antichrist is the Antichrist will have a right hand man who will tell you how great he the Antichrist is. This right hand man will be the Antichrist publicist, public relations consultant, image consultant, mouthpiece, whatever synonym we would like to use. The Antichrist's very own hot man is the false prophet. The Bible prophesies in Revelation 13, 12, the false prophet will have the same power as the Antichrist the beast, and he will cause or make, as some translations say, the earth and those who live in it to worship the first beast, the Antichrist. Also, the Bible predicts in Revelation 13, 14 through 15, the false prophet will have an image set up of the Antichrist, and those who do not worship it will be killed. Much like the statue that Nebuchadnezzar has set up in Daniel chapter 3, the story about the fiery furnace. Now on this side of the rapture, we are not sure what this image may look like. It may not look like a statue. It may be some form of AI technology. The Antichrist will also set up a one world currency, a one world economic system, and a one world religion. The Bible tells us in Revelation 13, 16, and 17 that he causes all people, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark and if you refuse this mark and if you are not a part of this system you cannot buy or sell warning do not take the mark listen to me again do not take the mark because right now even though you are left behind there is still hope for you to be reunited with your family but the bible is clear if you take the mark you will be eternally separated from your family we see this in Revelations 14, 9 through 11, which says, If you worship the beast or his image or take the mark, you will be tormented with fire and brimstone forever and ever. We believe that this mark will change your DNA, destroying what God made. Therefore, those who have taken the mark are now unsavable. So once again, please listen to me. Do not take the mark. Make no mistake, this decision to not take the mark will cost you your life. You will be beheaded for refusing the mark. But we see a beautiful promise in Revelation 20 verse 4. John saw the souls of those who were beheaded, who did not worship the beast or his image or receive the mark. And they live with Jesus in heaven. And if you refuse to worship the beast or his image or receive the mark, you will be reunited with your family in heaven too. So do not take the mark, whatever it may look like, whether it's a tattoo, chip, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just do not take the mark. Because chances are, people will not be walking around with 666 on their right hand or on their forehead. But on this side of the rapture, the world is being prepared for people to be open to receiving the mark. They're trying to make it sound cool. We have Amazon palm readers, chips implanted in brains, RFID chips, fingerprint identification, eyeball scanning identification, verification chips implanted in the hands with medical information and payment information chips implanted in the hands that will run your house like some smart home device the bible then tells us in daniel 9 27 that in the middle of the seven year period the antichrist will stop the sacrifice in the temple and we see in 2 thessalonians 2 4 the antichrist will oppose god and he will enter the temple and he will claim that he is god and demand to be worshiped and people will be so deceived they will love this man so much that they will believe he is God. Know that the seven year period will be a time of complete hell on earth. Things will get really bad really quick. Each day will get progressively worse than the one before with a mix of natural disasters and very terrifying supernatural events. Understand that the devil has now taken control of the earth. Now the rapture has happened and the seven year period is known as the tribulation. The seven year period will be met with judgment from God. Seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. Here's a closer look at the judgments. The tribulation period will be worse than any nightmare you may have had. It will be worse than any horror movie you may have seen. Here's a look at what's coming during the seven year tribulation period. I know it's hard to read. You should find a download link 
for the tribulation timeline and the judgment chart in the description box or maybe it was already downloaded for you along with this video and left on a storage device now that you know a little about what is coming know that there is still hope for you to be reunited with your family and your friends but it is time to rethink your belief system perhaps you thought you were a good enough person and you thought you didn't need jesus but you were left behind you may have repeated a prayer to accept jesus as your savior but didn't know what it really meant your attempt may have been a get out of jail free card or perhaps you shut out jesus because the church or someone offended you but you know we're all human we all mess up so don't miss heaven because some broken person judged you just to make themselves feel better perhaps you entirely dismiss christianity as boring ridiculous or irrelevant but understand being left behind is your wake-up call please commit to follow jesus now according to the prophecies in the bible a huge percentage of the earth population will die during the tribulation and if any of what is said scares you then thank god for it because he loves you and he wants to awaken you from this spiritual slumber and give you eternal life so remember first don't take the mark second trust in jesus surrender your life to jesus accept him as your lord and savior you will lose your life and be beheaded if you refuse to take the mark of the beast but you will spend eternity in heaven with your loved ones now here's some popular gospel verses first one corinthians 15 1 through 4 jesus died for your sins according to the scriptures jesus was buried and rose from the dead the third day according to the scriptures romans 10 9 through 13 says if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved you believe with your heart unto righteousness and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation and all who call upon the lord will be saved this is the gospel message the gospel message is that simple because everyone has done wrong things called sin against god we see that in romans 3:23. we all deserve god's punishment when they say that here in romans 6:23, and we cannot save ourselves from that punishment by our own efforts we cannot save ourselves by good works or by religion we see that in romans 3:20. so our situation seems hopeless but god did not leave us in this hopeless state god sent his son jesus to the world and jesus lived a perfect life without any sin jesus deserved no punishment but jesus died on the cross for us he suffered the punishment for our sins that we deserve and as we see in galatians 3:13, it says that he jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law jesus was made a curse for us romans 5 8 says god showed proved his love towards us that while we are we still fell him in our sins jesus still died for us god didn't wait for us to be lovable before he saved us no god saved us while we were still sinners in romans 5 18 says by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation but by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life but we cannot benefit from his death if we do nothing we must be humble god will forgive us if we confess our sins our evil deeds to him that's act 319 we must invite him into our lives and we must simply trust him trust jesus then god will change our lives that's 2 corinthians 5 17. if we are in christ then we are a new creature old things are passed away and all things are new jesus is suffering on the cross may be a difficult picture for you to understand jesus was betrayed by a friend arrested falsely accused and sentenced to death he was beaten and whipped a crown of thorns was pressed onto his head and bearing the cross he stumbled and staggered each step of the journey got worse he was spit on cursed mocked but jesus never looked back he kept going you know jesus could have avoided the cross jesus could have called down fire from heaven or he could have summoned a legion of angels to rescue him but jesus was not interested in saving himself he was only interested in saving you every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of god's plan to bring you to him because we're all broken we all mess up we have all made wrong choices you know no one has to teach a baby about anger and selfishness we're all born into it but jesus shed blood on the cross blotted out our sins nailed our sins to the cross the blood of jesus washed away our sins jesus's blood is our ticket to enter a relationship with god 
So what are you going to do with this good news? The Bible says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's not enough to believe in Jesus with your head. You must believe in Jesus with your heart. It's that simple. God loves you enough that he paid the price for your ticket into heaven. We're all sinners. None of us can buy our way into heaven. It's a 100% free gift. We can't earn it. We don't deserve it. But God loves us enough that he made a way. And your family and friends realize this. So put your faith and trust in Jesus. Just call out to Jesus and surrender yourself to him right now. Because now there's only one person at the cross. And that person is you. Here's a sample prayer that you can pray. It doesn't matter if you use these exact words or not. Just say to Jesus, thank you Jesus for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart right now. I do believe that you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. Just know that God hears your prayers and he will answer your prayers. And if you sincerely prayed and have truly surrendered yourself to Jesus, then Jesus will protect you and give you strength to face what is coming ahead. And now that you have surrendered your life to Jesus, if you can, find a Bible and read it. Churches should have some Bibles. Also, Christians may have Bibles in their homes left for you. I pray that if you find the Bible, because we see in Amos 8.11, The Lord God will send a famine in the land, but not a famine of bread or water, but of hearing the word of God. Meaning those preaching the true gospel will be gone. And if Bibles are found during this time, they will probably be destroyed. So find a Bible and read it. Because there's so much more in the Bible about the rapture and the tribulation that we didn't cover. But as you read, you will find out all the answers that you're looking for. Because the rapture and the tribulation are all over the Bible from cover to cover. Now at the end of the seven year tribulation period, the Antichrist will make everyone believe that he is God and that he can't be defeated. But at the end of the tribulation period, Jesus will come back to the earth on a white horse in the second coming. And he will not be alone. And trust me when I say you will want to be with Jesus when he returns to the earth on that white horse. You do not want to be on the earth to see when Jesus comes on that white horse. The Antichrist may think that he can beat Jesus. But you don't want to be on the Antichrist side in this fight. Because Jesus came the first time as a lamb. But when Jesus comes back in his second coming, he will not be a weak little lamb. Oh no. When Jesus comes back the second time, he's coming back as a lion, as a roaring lion, as a lion of the tribe of Judah. And all the evil of this world, all the bad news that we hear on TV, it'll all be gone. Everything and everyone who opposes Jesus will be destroyed. Those raptured are now on the winning side. And we will be on horses with Jesus, watching Jesus destroy evil. And your family and friends want you on one of those horses right along with us. So just remember, do not take the mark. Trust in Jesus. Now this video will be online before the rapture takes place. And as the world gets darker and darker before the rapture, hopefully this video will help you to know what is really coming up. But if you stumble across this video after the rapture, hopefully it will answer some questions you may have. Now you may have been grieving your family and friends. But heaven can also be your destiny. Jesus Christ is the key to unlock eternity with God. We all hope you choose the winning side and trust Jesus. Please know that you are being prayed for. I love you, but more importantly, Jesus loves you. And Jesus died for you so that you may have everlasting life. And if you believe and accept Jesus Christ, then you will be reunited with your family. Before I end this video, I'd just like to pray for you right now. Lord, I thank you for sending this person to this video. I pray for this person, Lord, right now as they're listening to the video. Whether it's before the rapture or after, I pray for them to be secure in you. I pray they choose to accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray that they will be comforted during this time of tribulation. I pray that they will be provided for as they try to survive during this time of trial that's coming upon the earth. Please give them the wisdom and direction to know what is coming next. I pray a hedge of protection around them, Lord. Bless them. And may you keep them and give them the desire for your word and a hunger for the truth, which can only be found in the Bible. I ask this in all in Jesus' name. Amen.
your family and friends who believed in Jesus are waiting for you. We are all hopeful and excited to meet you when you join us in heaven soon. God bless you and be safe.